hello and welcome again to my kitchen i promised you i will show you how to make the shahi paneer without onion and without garlic so here i am we are going to start the recipe right now this is a pan and i've added some butter to it to get started because it's a very um, rich dish it is best to cook it in butter or ghee and i've added a little bit of oil so that it doesn't burn um and then i'm gonna go ahead and add some cumin seeds now this dish is supposed to have a very sort of creamy but a granular milky taste to it but because i'm doing it without any onions i like to add the cumin seeds to just infuse uh, the flavors and not have it to be too bland along with this there are going to be some whole spices that are going to go in uh, and they are here so i'm adding some bay leaf this is indian bay leaf I'm going to add some cardamom pods. If you have powder cardamom, go ahead and use that. I'm going to add a little bit of a piece of cinnamon and some cloves. Okay, so that's going to go in. I'm going to turn up the heat a little bit and just have them infuse the oil with all the flavoring. So this entire dish is going to be made with tomatoes, <clears throat> with cashew cream and with heavy cream which is like dairy cream okay so that's going to be the base of the dish and then we're going to add in the paneer so that's pretty much the idea so you can see that all of this is crack crackling and moving around see that it's bubbling so now i know that it's time to add ginger paste so no garlic but ginger is allowed so we will use ginger this dish is supposed to have a very subtle flavor it's not a you know hit you in your face kind of a flavor so you don't want to overdo the ginger but you definitely want to cook it thoroughly so that it's going to not be overpowering and it won't be raw that's the that's the biggest thing about this dish okay so I'm going to saute this for a couple of minutes and you can absolutely do this at home you can uh, take out the whole spices after your dish is complete or you can actually run it in a stick blender and blend everything in it's really a matter of personal preference this is nicely fried up and you'll also know from the aroma that it's ready to move on to the next step so I'm gonna go in with the tomatoes and if you can puree raw tomatoes that would be ideal if you can't then you just have to cook them down till they disintegrate and the entire game of taste in this dish is really the play of the tomato puree and the different creams that we're gonna use so that's essentially the flavor profile that you have to go after. And if you're uh, plant-based and you don't do any dairy at all, then you can actually double the quantity of the cashew cream and not use any dairy cream at all. Okay, now again going back to my hack for extracting maximum moisture from the tomatoes, add salt. I'm adding Himalayan pink salt. I only cook with olive oil and pink salt so that's just the specialty of my cooking and I'm going to turn up the heat so all the moisture can get extracted I will also add some tomato puree and be generous with it I'm making about uh, let me see my list I'm making about four portions so I would add two ladles full of tomato puree and if I feel like it's not tangy enough or whatever I can always go back and add some more later but for now this will do and I just have to let the salt do all the work for me some dry fenugreek herbs and if you ordered the spice box from queenscurrykitchen.com you already have this in your stash I will also add some paprika to really get the red color going <coughs> I will add some coriander powder so if you have this basic stash of spices you can really whip up a lot of Indian dishes 
some garam masala which you can add either during the cooking process or after i like to do it during because then i am sure that it's well cooked okay we are going to give it a good stir until the time that it takes to cook this i'm going to show you at what stage our other dishes are and what are we doing with that right so this is going to need a minute i'm going to let it do that before i add anything else so my heat is on high and i will keep an eye on it but let me bring you over to this lentil stew dish that we had started a little while ago so i added the lentils to the strainer i added water and thinned it out now when it comes to a rolling boil the first thing that is going to go in are these potatoes and cut them pretty big so that they will boil down and become soft by the time your potatoes are done your your stew has simmered enough so you know that it's ready to turn off right so these are some ginormous potatoes but that's okay the longer it simmers the more taste the stew develops so we're not afraid of that we have time to make this and i always soak them in water so that they don't oxidize and get discolored so since potatoes are the uh, hardest vegetable in its raw form those are going to go into this stew first i'm going to heat increase the heat back up so that it will have the time to simmer out i may also cover the pan i've added some cilantro just because you can never have enough cilantro and it gives this a stir i know i'm jumping back and forth but you know this is the real world in a real kitchen where you're working on 3 4 5 dishes at a time this is the black eye beans so i'm going to bring you back to that in a second okay so let me just tell you quickly what are the other vegetables that are going to go in here we will be adding some uh, cauliflower florets for sure we will also be adding some okra and uh, you can add any seasonal vegetables of your choice if you want to add carrots if you want to add anything so the first step is to let it simmer out enough so that the potatoes will be halfway tender if we put all the vegetables at the same time then the cauliflower will disintegrate and the okra will be lost and the potatoes will still be raw so there's a timing to this once the potatoes are cooked we are going to add the other vegetables now coming back to this one i am going to add just a little bit of water because it is sticking to the bottom so just a tad bit to loosen up the bits at the bottom and i'm going to turn up the heat constantly keep an eye on this just make sure that if you didn't use the tomato that was pureed then just mash it with the back of your spoon so that it's going to break down easily let me bring you over to the black eye bean dish that we had started a while ago so i actually added that to the tempering and now it's simmering away i covered it for a bit because i wanted the grains to open up a little bit and absorb some of the goodness of the spices and the broth so here we go this is going to simmer for a little bit more i may need to add a little water but i want to actually first thicken this uh, i want to thicken this first and then add water so that i'll know that all the tomato bits that are moving around are all homogenized and they're not standing out like this so i'm going to give it a few more minutes cover it back up jump back to the shahi paneer <clears throat> stir it now one important uh, spice blend that i put in this is called kitchen king and uh, if you ordered the spice box it's one of the spices that you did get already in queen's curry kitchen's spice kit or in the refills and i'm just going to add a little bit so it's subtle but it's got a very north indian flavor it's very deep in its uh, it's like almost like a curry powder but like a very north indian curry powder if you were and you're going to add this give it a stir don't add too much because we are going to thin this down and deepen the taste of this with uh, by adding the cashew cream etc i'm going to go ahead and cover the lentil stew 
and I will turn down the heat on that just a little bit so that my cover doesn't fly around okay so coming back to this you can see that the oil is gradually separating from the pan from this uh, tomato paste right turn up the heat a little bit the idea to really cook this out is to make sure that all your spices are cooked nothing is raw so once this is done you'll actually start smelling it so you'll smell the toasted tomato you'll start to smell uh, like a nice unified aroma from the combination of all the things that you already put in there so now it's the time to add this cashew paste cashew cream whatever you want to call it so like i said if you don't do dairy you can add twice as much of this and if you do dairy then add this and heavy whipping cream and you should be good to go so i'm going to stir this in and almost immediately you start seeing that restaurant style the color of all the tikka masala and all the makhani dishes that we usually serve in the restaurant it's still pretty thick and the idea is that once you add the creams you're not going to overcook this stuff right you'll gently simmer it but not overcook it a lot of people like to go in with a hand blender and blend everything out I don't like it too smooth it just reminds me of baby food and that's not what I want to think about when I think about my food. Okay, so I'll turn up the heat just a tad bit. I'm going to add a little bit of water to help it along so that the bubbles are not going to flash up and burn me. So yesterday I was making this dish at home for about 10 or 11 people and um I went in with my stick blender but the stick blender went and got caught on the cinnamon stick and it was hot it was like a hot volcano that started spewing from it so I was lucky that I didn't get burnt but it was all over my kitchen so you know what be mindful when you work with the uh, a stick blender in hot liquids so this is simmering away I think I'm going to add just a little bit more because I have to make about four portions and most of it is just going to be the gravy of it so I'm going to add one more and then the rest of it I will be adding heavy cream. I just prefer to have cashew cream more than heavy cream. Um if you like the taste of one over the other by all means suit your palate and do what makes you happy. So I'm going to stir this in. Now this sauce also calls for sugar to balance out the acidity of the tomatoes. So you can add uh, sugar to your liking and you can also add a little baking soda just to neutralize the acidity of the tomatoes, right? So that's done. I'm also going to go back and hit it with some more dry fenugreek leaves. I am only doing this with one hand, but you know that if you're using this you have to crush it between the palms of your hand and drop it in so this is going to get simmered your sauce is pretty much done i am going to go back and add some sugar but i just need both my hands for that and then as a final finishing touch i am going to go in and add my heavy cream not a lot So I've used heavy cream and cashew cream in the ratio of 2 is to 1 and I'm making four portions. If you're making less or more feel free to calibrate based on your taste and what you like. So you can see that without using any food coloring or whatever you really can get the look of the makhani gravies that we use that we make in restaurants. And there is no onion in this, there is no pre-made tomato sauce, everything is made fresh. So that's pretty much the signature style of the way i cook all ingredients are fresh nothing is uh pre made like they make in most restaurants but then again we are trying to replicate so i make it exactly how we make it at home right so that's your sauce 
um, I would check for seasoning and of course I'm gonna add some sugar to this I will also add some pieces of paneer let me see if I can show you so there's my paneer it's gonna it's already been cubed and fried so that's gonna go in and uh, that's gonna be my entire shahi paneer coming together so if you're gonna make this for a party and your children are getting bored of eating the same old same old you don't know how to make it exciting do some restaurant style dishes in your home it's totally possible um, and also into this dish as soon as you take it off the flame put a pinch of nutmeg so that's like the secret of making the best makhni sauce is to add a hint of nutmeg so nutmeg is what vanilla is to dessert nutmeg is to dairy in the indian scene cardamom yes but also nutmeg so as soon as you get it off the flame put a little bit of a nutmeg powder and it's going to really take it over the top of course garnish it with more cream you can garnish it with cashew bits but i hope that you enjoyed this tutorial if you want to see uh, how far we have come with the lentil stew dish i'm actually going to turn this one off we're pretty much done here this is what it's looking like right now let me just show you what the potatoes are looking like so they're pretty big and they're going to take a minute to uh, boil down but you can actually go in there and you know cut it with a knife and see time to time when they're about 70 percent done that's when you're going to introduce all the other vegetables so it's not quite there yet i'm going to cover this back up Listen, if you're enjoying this tutorial, if you're enjoying a day with me in my kitchen, then feel free to share this uh, on your Facebook page. I'm just cooking a regular meal, but without any onions and garlic at this time of the year. And you'll be surprised, if you're not from India, you'll be surprised to know that there are actually entire communities that don't eat onion and garlic all their life. So they still eat really good food. Um, and they live very long so it's not like it's not possible right so this is simmering away and I'm going to remove the lid and I will increase the heat so that all of this watery stuff can disappear and pretty much become almost like a paste and then I'll add more water so that all these loose tomatoes you see this floating around I'm trying to kill this so that's what's going to happen okay and then of course I'm going to garnish this with cilantro and whatnot and then we'll be good to go all right so like always thank you for joining me if you want to take a class with me you can do it on www.queenscurrykitchen.com and if you want to send me a message and tell me something that you made and you want to share it with me don't forget to tag me on instagram at queen's curry kitchen or tag me on facebook i would love to see your creation thank you sarla thank you ritu thank you monica thank you shuchi and thank you tim for joining me today in my kitchen I'll see you real soon in the next one. Until then, be good and talk to you soon. Bye.